source that I've given them on YouTube. He said sarcastically. All right. This is a trinomial, yes? If I can factor it, then it must mean I can put it into a rectangle, right? Because if it's factorable, we can make a rectangle. We've done it like seven times, yeah? So what do I have right here? I have an x squared, yeah? What do I have right here? Eight bars, yeah? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Agreed? And what do I have right here? Seven little guys, yeah? So let's put these into a rectangle. What's the easiest thing to put into the rectangle? The x squared, because there's only one of them. There's no options, right? Which means my first factor must be x and x, correct? Everyone agrees? Now, that means this x has to carry on this way, doesn't it? Right? And it can't be another x up there, or I would have another x squared, yeah? So what has to go here? It has to be a little guy, right? Okay. How many little guys do I need? I need seven, correct? Okay. So I've got this space to fill because I have to cover this distance, right? And I have this space to fill because I have to cover this distance, correct? Now, because I have to cover this distance, but I only have to cover a width of one, then these guys also have to be ones, don't they? Everybody understand? All right, so somehow I got to fit eight of these guys in the yellow and the blue spots, and that leaves this green spot to fit in seven little guys, right? Now I know that I got to have seven little guys, yeah? I got one little guy there, so how many little guys do I need up there? How many? Seven. Because then, one times one, I'm going to get my seven little guys right here, aren't I? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Everyone agree? What's left to go in the holes? This guy is going to go right here, yeah? How many times? Seven. And this guy is going to go right here. How many times? Once. Did I make a rectangle? Oh, wait. These guys are shifted over a little, aren't they? Let's get them lined up right. Do I have a rectangle? It's x and 1 and x and 7. So I've got a rectangle, right? Is it done? These guys all have to be what? Negative, don't they? Well, if this guy's positive and this guy's negative, then where does the negative have to go? What's the thing I have to color in to make these bars all negative? I got to color in that little guy, don't I? Then all of them. What do I got to do here to get this guy negative? Can't color in this guy or this guy would be negative. So I got to color that guy in, yeah? Where do the factors live? In the middle or on the edges? On the edges. So what is this factor? What's this? What's this? Negative 7. What's this? X. What's this? Negative 1. X minus 7. X minus 1. What is X times X? X squared. What is X times negative 1? Negative X. What is negative 7 times X? Negative 7X. What is negative 7 times negative 1? 
positive 7. What is x squared plus nothing? x squared. What is negative 1 plus negative 7? Negative 8 x's. What 0 plus 7? Plus 7. Ta-da! That's why it works. Everybody ready? Let's move on to how it works. Now go to page 129. Are these factors or a product? Why do you know they're factors? Because this binomial is multiplying by this binomial, correct? We don't know the product, do we? Not until we do double distribution or we apply our little shortcut, yes? If we do double distribution, I get x squared plus 6x plus 4x plus 24, correct? Which gets me x squared plus 10x plus 24. Everyone agree? If I use the little magic shortcut because it's x and x, I get x squared plus 4 plus 6x plus 4 times 6. x squared plus 4 plus 6, 10x plus 4 times 6, 24. And I get the same answer. Is everybody good? Okay. Going in this direction is what we call expansion. Going in this direction is what we call factoring. Because we took this product and we broke it down into factors. Everybody cool? Now, we could draw pictures to do all of these. But that would be both time consuming and frustrating because you have to move the stuff around and decide where it's all going to go. Fortunately, there's mathematical ways to do this. Please notice. Add, multiply, right? Which means if I'm going backwards, I must be looking for two numbers that add to 10 and multiply to 24. Okay? If I have those numbers, which are 6 and 4, I can go backwards from here, can't I? Does everybody understand that? If I know what these two miracle numbers are, because I'm reversing distribution, I will know what numbers to put there. Everybody cool? All right. You've seen it happen with the picture, because it worked, right? Because if you go back to where we were, don't turn back, just watch. If you go back to where we were, you see that this final answer in the factors, I had negative 7 and negative 1, which added to negative 8 and negative 7 times negative 1, which multiplied to positive 7. Is everyone cool? All right. If it happens once in math, and your teacher tells you, and you can see it with a pretty simple, once you know how to work your way around these things, pretty simple diagram, then how many times is it going to happen? Always. So, let's look at where we are. What do I see here? Do I see a single letter by itself at the front? Yes. So does it look just like this and this? Yeah. So does that mean any rules we apply to these yellow expressions, we can apply to here? Yes. So I must need to add to what number? Nope. Seven. And I must need to multiply to what number? Negative 18. Now, since I need to multiply to negative 18, this is where the factoring comes in. I need a pair of numbers that will multiply to 18. So I need to be able to do 
this. with 18, that, which you learned how to do years and years ago, yes? So let's have a look at 18. I need pairs of numbers that will multiply to 18. The first one is one and 18. Can one and 18 go together in any way to make seven? No, 18 plus one is 19, 18 minus one is 17. One minus 18 is negative 17, negative one minus 18 is negative 19. I cannot get the seven, can I? Will two and nine get me to seven? How? Nine minus two, right? So the two is negative, the nine is positive. Now look, look at how it worked. We had x plus four, x plus six, because four times six makes 24 and adds to 10. So what is my answer here? X minus 2 and x plus 9. Now, do any of you ever have to walk up to me and say, Mr. Myers, I just want to see if I'm doing it right. No, you don't. Why? Because you can check it. What's x times x? x squared. Yay. What is x times 9? Nine? 9x. Nine nine what is negative 2 times x? Negative 2x. 9 minus 2 is 7, isn't it? Yeah. Yay! What's negative 2 times negative 9? Negative 18. Yay! Do you ever need to ask in this whole unit if you have done it right? No, because it takes literally one second to check. When we get to our test, how many of you think you are going to have 30 spare seconds at the end of the test? All of you put your hand up because all of you spend the last three or four minutes of every test period talking to each other. Does that mean you have 30 seconds? If I gave you a 30 question test, does that mean you have 30 seconds to check every single answer? So should you hand it in if it doesn't work? No. Everybody good? Great. Look at B. Does B look very similar to A? Well, it does, but there's different signs. But that's okay, because we know how to do four plus eight. We also know how to do four minus eight. So the signs don't matter, since it looks the same. What must I add to? Negative two. What must I multiply to? Negative eight. Is it one and eight? No. Is it two and four? Yeah. How do two and four get me to negative two? Is it four plus two or four minus two or two plus four or two minus four? Two minus four, yes? So it is x plus two and x minus four. Now some of you will say, well, Mr. Myers, I got x minus 4 and x plus 2. Is that right? Is it? Is 5 times 2 the same as 2 times 5? Yeah. So is that one okay? Yeah. Right. Is this one okay? x plus 4, x minus 2. No, because 4 minus 2 is not negative 2. If you expanded this, you would not get that, which is what I mean by checking. Is everybody good? Excellent. Now, all by yourselves, do C. Go. When I say all by yourself, I mean, of course, you can talk to your neighbor should you need to. But you shouldn't need to. Do not do D, only do C. What do I need to add to? Negative what? Negative 12. What do I need to multiply to? 
35. Is it 1 and 35? No. Is it 5 and 7? Yeah. How? Negative 5 and negative 7. X minus 5. X minus 7. And then I check. Is negative 5 minus 7 negative 12? Yeah, sure, you betcha. Is negative 5 times negative 7 positive 35? Yeah, sure, you betcha. Now listen. Sometimes this last number is going to have a lot of factors. Okay? For example, if we were to do 48, it would be 1 and 48, 2 and 24, 3 and 16, 4 and 12, 6 and 8. You got to check a lot of numbers, yeah? But soon with practice, you will start seeing the numbers, the pairs, almost immediately. About seven years ago, I was teaching a kid in grade nine. This used to be in the grade nine curriculum. And the kid was so bad at math, I've never taught a kid worse at math than that kid. Okay? Three plus four, kid. I don't know, Mr. Myers. I have no idea. Use your calculator. My what? That's how bad he was at math. Couldn't do a thing. Great kid, loved him to death. One of my best, if I knew him now, we would be friends. That's how great this kid was. Couldn't do math at all. We got to this. He would look at the question, wouldn't even write anything down, like be there, negative four, two. How were you able to do that, kid? I don't know, I just see it. I give him a whole page. He'd go negative four, two, negative seven, 12, negative eight. Whole way down the whole page. Wouldn't write it down. I don't know how to write the answer, but he knew the pair right away. So have faith. I, I. What's different about D? It changed the letter. What does that make me want to do when someone says they can't do math when I change the letter? Stab myself in the eye. Does the letter matter? No. So I need to multiply, er, sorry, add to what? Add to 12. Multiply to what? Negative 20. Is it 1 and 20? No. no. Is it 2 and 10? It looks like it's 2 and 10. So, since this is negative, it must be, one of these has to be negative, doesn't it? Is 10 minus 2 12? No. Is 2 minus 10 12? No. So if nothing works then do we force the math on this problem? No. Why? Because this does not factor. Why would I put that in your class? Why would I put that in there? Because it's just important to know when you can't simplify as when you can. This is the equivalent of a prime number. Its only factors are 1 and a squared plus 12a minus 20. Everybody understand? All right. Now, let's start applying our knowledge. Does E look like one you could do? The only thing that's weird, it's a letter Y. So instead of being X plus or minus something and X plus or minus something, what's it going to be? Y. Go. Do it. You don't need me to do E. Everybody good? Now, do you need to write all this out? Some of you already are like, no, I got it. Some of you may want to keep writing it out. Do I care? No. Is everybody cool with E? Everyone can do it, right? Everybody? at least a working knowledge of it. You're like, yeah, I'm getting there. If I had that grade three thing where you had a green light, a red light, and a yellow light, everybody would at least be holding up the yellow light. 
You know that thing? It's all of you have had a teacher that have done that, something like that. Or you've held up your hand and one is I totally get it and five is I don't get it at all and you put up your numbers in between and you're all looking forward so I can just say, oh, everybody's at a three, I can move on. And none of you have to say, oh, I don't know how to do it. Or as Vanessa says, you give one of these on a scale. I can't even add Mr. Myers to let's get on with it. I'm sick and tired of going over this. And then you put it to a scale in the middle. We've all seen some, everybody's had a teacher that's done something like that, right? My version of that is what? Are we cool? Are we cool? Everybody cool? Going once, going twice, going thrice. That's my version of it. Everybody's cool, yeah? All right. So we'll look at F. What bothers us? There's a four in front of it. This is the second kind of factoring I have taught you to do, yeah? Don't you remember how I banned food in here because you guys are disgusting slobs? Apparently not. No more food because you guys are disgusting slobs. Finish your Slurpee. Don't bring another one. Or whatever it is you're drinking. Where was I? All right. This is the second type of factoring I've shown you, yes? What was the warning that I gave you in the first type of factoring that I showed you? What was the warning in the first type of factoring that I showed you? What's that big blue word say? Always do this factoring anytime you can. Is this a situation where we can do that factoring? Why? Because 4 divides into everything there. So I do that. 4 goes to the front, and then what's the first quotient? x squared minus, what's the second quotient? 5x. What's the third quotient? 14. Hey! Aren't those exactly the same? So we already know that this is going to be x plus 2 and x minus 7, correct? Because we just did that question, right? Almost all of you, at least once on a test or an assignment, are going to forget that 4. That 4 goes all the way down to the final answer. How will you know? Well, if you forget that 4 and you expand this, you'll only get to there, won't you? And you need to get to there. Everybody good? So that's the first wrinkle that we have put in. Second wrinkle. First wrinkle, I change the letters. That doesn't mean nothing, Myers. You can't fool me by changing the letters. Don't be that way. Okay, fine. Next thing I did, I threw a number in the front. Do we know how to deal with it? Great, then do it, because that's what G is. Go. When did you do this? When did you do this? What grade did you do this? Three years ago? Grade seven? Parsh, where are you from? When did you do this? Six and seven? Hey, Germany, when did you do this? Huh? No. All right, what do I got to do in the very first step in G? Divide by 10. Do I, can I forget about that 10? No. no. 10. X squared plus 8X plus 12. Which means I got to add to what? 8 and multiply to what? 12. Is it 1 and 12? No. Is it 2 and 6? 
Yes, 10. X plus 2, X plus 6. Everybody good? All right, Myers, you can't fool me now. I know what to do if you change the letter. I know what to do if you change the number. What the hell did you do in H? What's H? Negative. How do we deal with it? How do we get rid of the number out in front here? Divide it. So how are we going to get rid of the number out in front here? Divide it, because if it works once in math, how often does it work? Always. So if I divide all this by negative 4, negative 4 goes out front, what is my trinomial in here now? What's this? T squared. What's this? Plus 4T. What's this? Negative 32. Which means now I need to add to what? Four. And multiply to what? Negative 32. Is it 1 in 32? No. Is it 2 in 16? No. Is it 4 and 8? Yeah. How does 4 and 8 get me to positive 4? 8 minus 4. So it is negative 4. T minus 4. T plus 8. Is everybody good? All right, Myers, you can't fool me when you change the letter. I got you. You can't fool me when you change the number. I got you. You can't fool me when you put a negative. I got you. What's wrong with I? The order's messed up. Hey, class, what's 2 plus 7 minus 3? Why? Because 2 plus 7 is 9, 9 minus 3, right? Okay. What's negative 3 plus 2 plus 7? 6. What's 2 minus 3 plus 7? What's 7 minus 3 plus 2? What does that tell you about order? Doesn't matter. So what am I going to do with I to make it something that I like? You're going to put it in the right order. What do we like at the beginning? The letter. Negative D squared. Minus 5D. Minus 24. Now what don't I like about it? I don't like a negative in front. How do I get rid of it? Divide by what? Negative 1. The number that's out in front. Negative D squared plus 5D plus 24. Correct? Now... I need numbers that are going to do what? Add to 5 and multiply to 24. That's positive, though. So my, 20, my factors have to both be the same sign, don't they? They either have to be negative, negative, or positive, positive, right? So is it 1 and 24? 2 and 12? 3 and 8? Really? 3 and 8, both having the same sign, are going to get me to 5. 3 plus 8 is what? 11. Negative 3 minus 8 is what? Negative 11. Negative 3 minus, right? They both have to be the same sign, don't they? So it would have to be negative 3 and negative 8. Negative 3 and negative 8 is negative 11, not 5. So were we able to factor it? We were able to do one factor when we got that negative out of there. But we weren't able to go one more step because this is done. Is everybody cool? All right. We know what to do if you change the letter. We know what to do if you change the number. We know what to do if you change the sign. We know what to do if you change the order. What's different about J? There's another letter. Would we be able to do that. What would you do? You need numbers that do what? Add to 19 and multiply to negative 20. Is it 1 in 20? Yes. Of course it is. It's 1 in 20, right? How do 1 and 20 get to 19? 
20 minus 1, correct? So it would be v plus 20 and v minus 1, yeah? Okay, so you know how to do it, right? Except what do I need at the end? I need a b in there. Well, I've already got my v. Where's the b go? Right, with the 20. Twenty times one is twenty. B times B is B squared. Any problems? I know what to do when you change a letter. I know what to do when you change a number. I know what to do when you change a sign. I know what to do when you change the order. I know what to do when you add a letter. Great. Do K. What do I need to add to? What do I need to multiply to? Everybody's that far, right? Is it 1 and 28? Is it 2 and 14? Yep. How do 2 and 14 get me to 12? 14 minus 2, correct? X minus 2. But it's not 2. What is it? To y, because I need the y at the end. And x plus 14, but it's not plus 14, it's plus 14. Y. Why? Why? Because I need a y at the end. What if it was s and p? Then it would be s minus 2p. What if it was lightning bolt dollar sign? Then it would be lightning bolt minus 2 dollar sign. Right? Okay. What bothers you about L? I know what to do when there's a squared. And I would know what to do if that was a B squared. But it's not. What is it? It's a B cubed. So I got too many Bs, don't I? What do I do when I got too many of something? Divide it out. What can I bring out of there? A B. Is that a common factor? So it goes to the front. Then what do I write? A squared minus AB 20B squared. And now it looks just like what we already know what to do with. What do I need to add to? What kind of one? Negative one. What do I need to multiply to? Negative 20. Is it 1 and 20? 1 and 20 will go together to make 1? No. no. Is it 2 and 10? No. Is it 4 and 5? Yes. Of course it is. How do 4 and 5 make negative 1? 5 minus 4 is negative 1, Hannah? 4 minus 5. So there's my negative. Can I forget about the B? No, A minus 5. Can I forget about the B? No, and A plus 4. Can I forget about the B? No. I know what to do when I change a letter. I know what to do when I put a number in front. I know what to do when I put a negative in front. I know what to do when I change the order. I know what to do when I add a second letter. I know what to do when I add a second letter that needs to be factored out. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with them? I can't factor it out. Yeah. I know what to do when this is x squared, don't I? Mm -hmm. And I know what to do when that's fitting x, don't I? Mm -hmm. I could do this now in my sleep, can't I? Right? Okay, what do you notice about this first term and the first term in the answer? Divided by? It's add? What is the relationship between a and a squared? 
isn't the square root of a squared a? Because a times a would be a squared, wouldn't it? Well, what do I need here? I need x to the fourth, don't I? And it's got to be the same thing. What do I do if it's x to the fourth instead of x squared? What did I do here? I square root. So what do I do here? I need two things that are the same. A and A. So what do I do here? Square root. What's the square root of x to the fourth? x squared. Is x squared times x squared x to the fourth? So if I had this, wouldn't my first be x to the fourth? So I'm done, aren't I? Again, no, do what you know, and it fixes things. What do I need to add to? Negative 15. What do I need to multiply to? 50. Is it 1 and 50? Is it 2 and 25? Is it 5 and 10? Yeah. How do 5 and 10 get me to negative 15? Negative 5 and negative 10. Negative 5, negative 10. And then I check. x times x squared, x to the fourth. Negative 10x squared, negative 5x squared. Negative 15, 5 times 10, 50. Right? I know what to do when I have a letter. I know what to do when I have a number. I know what to do when I have a negative. I know what to do when I change a letter. I know what to do when I add a letter. I know what to do when I add a second letter. And I know what to do if it's x to the fourth. What if it was x to the sixth? Then, x cubed. then it would be x cubed and x cubed. What if it was x to the eighth? x4, x4. What if it was x to the 64th? x32, x32. What if it was x to the ninth? Can't be done. What if it was x to the ninth plus 24x to the fifth plus uh, 140x? You would bring it down to x to the eighth. How, Joseph? You would divide the whole thing by x, and you'd have x to the 8th plus 24x to the 4th plus 140. And then you could do it. Even though I've never shown you that before, you took knowledge that you could see and built an answer. Everybody good? That's the end of the second type of factoring. But it leads directly to the third type of factoring, because you can see I have three more here, don't I? Would I ever write that on a test? Why not? Because zero, we would never write it. But when I write it this way, if I asked you, what do we have to add to and what do we have to multiply to? What do I got to add to? Zero. And what do I got to multiply to? Nine. Is it one and nine? Yeah, negative nine. Thank you. Is it 3 and 3? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Because how do 3 and 3 get me to 0? 3 minus 3. So it would be x plus 3. x minus 3, correct? Everyone agree? Okay. What do you notice about the relationship between x squared and our first term in the factors? We've already talked about this one. What is it? We just did it over here. It's the square root, isn't it? Okay. What's the relationship between 9 and 3 and 3? Square root. So, in this trinomial, I had a perfect square. Then I had nothing. And then I had another perfect square, didn't I? X squared, because this should really have been written as x squared minus 9, yeah? yeah? So since that's a perfect square and that's a perfect square, I took the square root and the square root, correct? 
Look at N. How should it really be written? Not plus. Minus 625. 625 a perfect square? What is it? 25. So this is x plus 25, x minus 25, correct? Look at this one. What do you notice? What's different on P? There is a middle term, yeah? What else is different? Minus 9, minus 625, plus 16. But is 16 a perfect square? So I know my first term has to be x. It's got to be the square root of that, right? And I know my last term's got to be a perfect square there. What goes in the middle? Plus. 4x plus 4x is 8x. Right? What if I change this to x squared minus 8x plus 16? Then what would it be? x minus 4. x minus 4. x. X plus no, x plus 4 would make this disappear, just like it did in these two. X minus 4, x minus 4. Everybody good? All right. Class goes until 103 or whatever it is. I want to go over your test, but I'm not going to do that right now, because again, if I go over, if I hand out your test, you're going to go 8, poo, and you're not going to do any work. So... You are going to work now for 12 minutes till 1249. Then I'm going to give out your tests. Then we're going to go over. Okay? What you are doing now, I know this says assignment, but again, I am changing my mind. This is your practice. This page 132 is the assignment. And you will notice... I want to have a grapplegrommet on greatest common factor and polynomial multiplication, which is the first two parts of this unit, not this. That quiz will be tomorrow. Okay? Go. You're going to need to see how to do this. I'm going to work with you right now. Okay. But first.